Ma'am, shall we start, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I welcome you once again uh, for this uh, expert le lecture uh, on the eve of uh, Concrete Day celebrations 2022. So, today, uh, for session two, we have uh, uh, Dr. Sindhu Nachiyar, ma'am, uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Katangurutur, Chennai. And uh, today, uh, ma'am is going to uh, take a session on biomimicry, providing a uh, concrete solution to the global problem. So now I request our student representative, uh, Ms. Vivedita, to introduce the speaker to the participants. Over to you, uh, Vivedita. Thank you, sir. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. On behalf of the entire civil department, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. S. Sindhu Nachia, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Katangulatu. Welcome, ma'am. She completed her bachelor degree in civil engineering at Mapkosh Lang Engineering College, a master's in structural engineering from SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Katangulatu, and PhD in biomimics in structural engineering from SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Katangulatu. She has published 60 plus articles in journals and conference proceedings. She holds membership as a life member in Institute of Engineers, life member in Indian chapter, American Concrete Institute, life member in International Association of Engineers, life member in Indian Concrete Institute, life member in Indian Society of Technical Education. She holds the position of Executive Committee member for ICI Chennai Center for the period of 2001 to 2023. Editorial board, board member in IEI Kartangulatu Local Center Bulletin from October 2020. Receiver of journal article in first international conference on advanced in structural materials and management, Department of Civil Engineering, SRMist Kartangulatu. She is a student mentor for Tamil Nadu in All India Students Concrete Club Cube Test Competition 2022, organized by Indian Chapter American Concrete Institute. Student mentor for Indian Chapter American Concrete Institute and Department of Civil Engineering, SRMS Katangulatu, 2022. Not only she is strong in her academics, but also in sports. She has won silver medal in zonal level volleyball tournament 2007 held at Government College of Engineering, Tirnalveli. Won gold medal in zonal level volleyball tournament 2008 held at GU Pope College of Engineering, Tutukari. Won first in volleyball tournament conducted by Sports Development Authority of Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu, Virudhanagar District. With all this having been said, I now would like to call upon Dr. S. Sindhu Nachia to share her thoughts. And over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Nivedita. And uh, hello, all. Sir, shall I start? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can start, ma'am. Sir, is the screen visible to everybody? Yes, ma'am, visible, ma'am. Yes. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, on this day of Concrete Day celebration, sir, am I audible? Do you know me? Yes. Sorry, ma'am. It's, okay, yes, ma okay. it's audible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, all. On this day of Concrete Day celebration, before I move on to the uh, content of what is being going to be discussed today, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Vijay, sir, and uh, Dr. Kumuda, ma'am, for inviting me for this lecture. And uh, none other than the usual thing everybody knows about concrete is all about what are the tests being conducted and how about the materialization characteristics and so on today i would like to bring upon a new concept which is biomimicry which is providing concrete solution to a global problem can i please get a few feedback or a few uh, things about does anybody know what is biomimicry anyone or other
has everyone anybody has come across uh, with the term of biomimicry sir am i audible yes ma'am you are audible ma'am okay uh, okay so just moving on to the biomimicry so this is what is the overall thing which is going to be discussed on the session it is the introduction to biomimicry its approaches the advantages the applications of biomimicry in various fields the global problems and nature based solution in civil engineering and what is the work which is being carried out in srm isc that is biomedical application in civil engineering and the summary so moving on to the term that is the biomimicry that is introduction to biomimicry so as the no name suggests biomimicry is bio means life and mimics means it is to imitate so something is being learned from nature and we are imitating that in the either in the form of system process or elements and then we solve the human problem so biomimics it's learning from nature and it's not about nature so what exactly is the thing we can learn from nature is what we are going to see here so it is all about the biologically inspired design so biomimicry is the term which was coined in 1960 by dr jack steel which is bionics and later on it is being named as or termed as biomimetics in 1969 by otto and in 1997 it is termed as the biomimicry which is by janine benes and she has also written a book which is innovation inspired by nature the terminologies biomimicry bio inspired design biomimetics and bio design so everything is focusing on nature inspired innovation that improves the sustainability for human existence and support the planet as a whole so it is nothing but which is being uh, nature inspired solutions for human problem so few terminologies which we have to know is biomorphism so it is a structure which looks like something in nature and biomimicry is learning from functional design in nature and applying it to human innovation and bio utilization is something which is being using something from the nature and that is not biomimicry and biomimics is the people who use or practice biomimicry either in the form or process or system they get the idea from the nature and getting impl implemented to solve the problems so what is that exactly we can learn from nature so nature by itself is a teacher which is the very old teacher of about 8.3 million old and it has the world's largest research and development laboratory so nature operates according to the law of natural selection and survival of the fittest and it is resilient and it also the natural resources and energy are being recycled reused and renewed so this is what we have to be learning from nature so what are the other things that nature could actually teach us so it is without destroying the biosphere anything which can be done and they aren't toxic and they don't produce permanent garbage and the conservation of energy and reduction of waste is yet another term which has to be learned from nature and number of engineering and architectural applications have learned from these natural processes to create products and habitats that are models of resource efficiency so moving on to the approaches of biomimicry so now we know what is biomimicry and in what way we can approach the nature by which means so we have two types of approaches one is the top down approach and other one is the bottom up approach top down approach is otherwise called the design looking to biology and bottom up approach it is biology influencing design the design looking to biology is the first step where we have a design problem so we have constructed some design problem and that design problem is later on looked into the nature for finding out any solution so we have a problem and then we find the solution into the nature that is called top down approach and bottom up approach is just the reverse of the top down approach where we have a solution in the nature and that solution is being implemented for biological research so that is the bottom up approach here we can see a few examples of top down approach and bottom up approach so in top down approach we have a design problem a car is being manufactured later on it is looked into the nature which is mimicking the shape of a fish similarly in the bottom up approach we can see the lotus plant or lotus leaf which is repellent to water 
So that concept is being taken into account by which we have uh, n number of water repellent cloths and water repellent paints have also been innovated. So biomimicry is nothing but nature as model, measure, and mentor. So nature as a model, that is biomimicry, is a new science that studies nature's models and then imitates or to solve human problems. As measure, it is the rightness of our innovation. And as a mentor, is a new way of viewing and valuing nature, by which way we can approach nature for our solutions. So emulating biological structures. The biological structures are everywhere, both in microscopic as well as in macroscopic scales. So here we can see the leaf of lotus plant is water repellent, as it is being already discussed. So the same uh, phenomena by which the fabrics is being um, innovated. So it is a hydrophobic surface which is created in the clots. So previously it was done using toxic chemicals, but now the surface is being directly created in the fabrics. So emulating biological process. So process is photosynthesis is a process by which, which is being inspired and uh, the solar cells are being working. The ants is, even the ants that are being inspired by which the delivery trucks are more efficiently uh, traveling in the same time to save the money, the greenhouse emissions and time. So yet another, the biological system by which we can see is that the input of any manufacturing device is obviously becoming a waste at the end of a man-made process. So what we give it as an input, at the end we get it as a waste. But what we can study from the nature is that, is the food chain. So the food of, that is the dead parts or whatever is being dying, is becoming the food of the other. That is the source of one thing is the waste of something else. That is what we have to think from the nature. So based on this, we can come up with recyclable and biodegradable uh, materials uh, by which we can save the environment. So the next is advantages of biomimicry. So what for we have to move into the term biomimicry or we have to look into nature. So we have two things. One is the man-made system and other one is the biological system. The man-made system is simple. It is disconnected and is monofunctional. So more waste is being generated from man-made systems and it is resistance to change because it is being manufactured for one particular programming and long-term toxins are being released from man-made systems. It is centralized or monocultural, fossil fuel dependent and maximum only one goal is being achieved from man-made system and it is extractive. So what are the advantages of biological system with respect to man-made system? It is a bit complex, it is interconnected and is symbolic. So here the major term is, it's the zero waste concept which we have to focus on. Adapted to constant change, no long-term toxins are being produced. It is distributed and diversified. So run on current solar income, optimized as whole system and is additive. So the major keyword is the zero waste concept and the optimization of a whole system. So what is zero waste and optimization? Zero waste is, so nothing becomes a waste in case of biological system as we have seen in the food chain. Optimization is other than the conventional system, a few et and other things which is being optimized. By doing all these things, what exactly can be achieved is sustainability, diversity, fully utilize the habitat. Rather than maximize, we have to optimize any particular uh, structural element emulate and enhance ecosystem, redefine and eliminate waste, dynamic form and reduces material cost and use energy efficiently. The key term again here is the sustainability, optimization and energy efficient and reducing material cost, which is the trending thing which is happening right now in the uh, new era. So moving on to the application of biomimicry in various fields. So the biomimicry is not only used in civil engineering, so it is used in various fields of sciences and engineering. So it is being applied in agriculture, architecture, the climate change, energy efficiency, human safety, industrial design, natural cleaning and transportation. So coming up with the climate change. So here we can see the concept which is being inspired from the human lungs so one end, which is we intake oxygen and we leave out carbon dioxide. 
So the same passage is being, the concept is being inspired and one end is for the to and fro in the traffic signal is being taken out. And also in the architecture, it is a termite building which is being inspired. So the termite structure is a sustainable building which is able to withstand a temperature even in both hot and cold condition. So with the help of the concept of the termite building concept, so the East Gate building is also being built. So the energy efficiency is all about learning how to create friction. And in the humbug whales, by the movement of humbug whales, we are able to produce the energy efficient wind power. And from the human safety point of view, the dolphins, which is able to detect the uh, warning signals or the signals from a very larger area. So with that, we are able to detect the signals of tsunami or anything by sensitive devices, which is being uh, kept inside the seawater. And in the industrial design, the structural point of view, that is the skeletal stress, uh, system, uh, as well as the tree has been implemented to optimize the strength and materials of any type of structure. So natural cleaning process is being inspired from the lotus leaf and the transportation, which is the kingfisher, which has come up with the uh, bullet train, which is being given in the Japan. So global problems and nature-based solution. So what are all the global problems which is which we are able to see and the solutions which we are going to see, especially on the civil engineering. So far, we are seeing about the varying applications in various fields of engineering. So what exactly is being focusing on the civil engineering point of view? So here, these are few of the nature-based solutions to address the global societal challenges. So few of the societal challenges are climate change. So because of the varying temperature from hot and cold climate, so we are able to see a climate change. Food security is very much required. So water security is yet another thing which has to be uh, taken care. Disaster risk is one more important thing because nowadays we are able to face many of the disaster, human health, economic and social development. So these are all the societal challenges. So how could we address these societal challenges with respect to nature-based solution? Nature-based solution is nothing but mimicking from nature, which is your biomimicry. So these are all the nature-based solutions by which we can address these societal challenges. It is ecological restoration, ecological engineering, forest landscape restoration, green infrastructure, natural infrastructure, the climate adaptation services, ecosystem-based adaptation, mitigation, and risk reduction, and area-based conservation. So all these things, the green infrastructure and natural infrastructure, all these things is again based on nature by itself. The nature-based solution is the restoration, the recycling, and how we are able to uh, reduce the waste. So it's nothing but usage of waste uh, what are all the waste which is being generated that has to be used in other form as an input for any other innovation. The restoration, the issue to be specific. So what are all the waste which is being generated that has to be taken into account and these waste, how it can be used as a source of any other productive um, concept that also to be checked on it. The infrastructure management point of view and protection of these ecosystem uh, based approaches will lead to the solving of the societal challenges, which in turn will lead to the human well-being and biodiversity benefits. So what is the major thing which has to be mainly focused on is minimizing the conservation consumption of resources. As we all know, in um, civil engineering, concrete plays the major role in everything. Concrete is nothing but is a mixture of cement, sand, fine aggregate, your coarse aggregate, and then any other admixtures, whatever we need, we will be adding into it. Our main thing nowadays we are facing is that the unavailability of the natural source, which is the sand. So instead of the natural sand, we are finding many replacement for those natural sand as manufactured sand has also become uh, common nowadays. So apart from that, we are moving on to fly ash based uh, replacements same way cement is yet another thing which plays a major role the cement by itself is the major contribution uh, nowadays which is creating an 
very uh, greenhouse or very much uh, carbon footprint which is being extracted from the cement so consumption or the reduce or the reduction of the usage of cement has to be focused mainly for ecosystem to be uh, conserved so minimizing the conservation of resources so either by replacing cement or by replacing the sand that is what majorly is being the researchers are being done nowadays and maximizing reuse of resources reuse of resources is nothing but any waste as it was being already told any waste of another thing which is being used as a resource for uh, research so what is the waste that is the fly ash waste or uh, any uh, hair or uh, the tensile property like we are nowadays we are moving on with uh, the varying fibers which is being used whichever is being a waste again so recently we are also able to see the biomedical waste is yet another waste which is being generated electronic waste which is again being generated and all these waste are being reused in either form of uh, any other material which is being uh, introduced in the concrete using recyclable or renewable resources again so it is not that we should not only focus on reuse of the waste so something is becoming a waste i'm sorry what purani masadi gypsy hai sorry ma'am sorry it's okay thank you so something it's not only that we have to focus on reusing any waste so something is getting wasted and that is being used in concrete that is not that should not be the focus which we are uh, thinking on we should think on what is to be done with what we are going to find after 20 years as of now i'm i'm using a waste in the concrete whether the concrete which i'm using the waste now can be recycled after 20 years or 30 years from now on that we have to predict now itself so it's not only about reuse we should think on whether the product which we are defining now because of the reused material can be recycled in the future that also has to be taken into account which plays the major role so protecting the natural environment because these waste again creates a major pollution and major problems in the environment so by using these waste in the concrete or using these waste in any form which can be recycled uh, which obviously uh, protects the nat nature and that has to create a non toxic and healthy environment and pursuing quality in the creation of build environment that is the major thing which has to be concentrated it's not only just using the waste in the concrete material we have to check on whether it will give a quality based uh, thing because usually we know the few things which we check on concrete is the compressive split or whatsoever tensile property flexure durability properties so we have to do researches on using these waste whether we are able to achieve these minimum or the standardized values by which we are achieving the targeted strength is being achieved that also has to be proven quality is also at another thing so all these six points to be taken as focusing point which we have to use the uh, nature's solutions so biomimicry concept in the field of civil engineering so so far we have seen what are all the other fields by which the biomimicry concept is being used so in case of civil engineering by using the concept of biomimicry we can construct the sustainable building and eco friendly materials and it also gives to gives us the green technology material reduce the environmental impact and reduce the engineering cost so we also know what is the cost of the materials nowadays we are using the cement or river sand or m sand whatever it is or aggregates whatsoever we know what is the cost so once we are using uh, any other waste is being replaced into these concrete or concrete materials construction materials the engineering cost also is getting reduced sustainable solutions to human challenges and building innovation designs can compensate energy sufficiency serving as thermal regulation water efficiency heat conservation and dynamic behavior so in here we can see the picture which is inspired from cactus building the cactus building is uh, inspired from the cactus so cactus is again like termite it is able to withstand or it is able to take up 
the energy which is being taken into account it will store it is actually seen in desert areas it will it will store the water for a very long period so that concept is being taken that shape is being taken and is being implemented in one such building so this is another building it is in chicago which is inspiring the snail or it is the mollus so this can withstand it is a high raised building and it is able to withstand the wind energy uh, which is being inspired from the snail and here we can see one more building which is similar to that of human eye so human eye once we are uh, viewing on the sunlight obviously the our, our eye lashes will be closing so in the same way based on the lighting effect which is on the environment the pattern or the building itself will change its orientation based on the lighting so this is being inspired from the human eye so here we are able to see the eiffel tower which is inspired from the femur bone femur bone is the bone which is there in the human body that is the leg bone we call it as the human bone which is the biological term the leg bone in the human body is termed as a femur bone so based on this shape the shape is being taken which is able to withstand the entire weight of our body so based on this structure only the eiffel tower is also being constructed so a museum in us is being inspired from the bird wings again as the bird wings is uh, having an movement similarly based on the wind effect or the lighting effect the museum will be having the orientation of the building which is inspired from the bird wings so at another example is in the singapore we are having a theater which is being inspired from the durian fruit that is the structure of the fruit is being we will see one uh, one after the other in detail in the next slides so this is the branching columns which are modeled on trees so usually trees we have varying branches and which is able to transmit sunlight within the leaves so this structure is being modeled from the trees which is in spain by which the natural lighting is let into the building and is being inspired from the trees so moving on to each and everything so here we can see the chicago spire so as i have already told here the biomorphic elements is being used the spiral structure of the snail is being inspired and is given in this spire so in this high rise building we have the intelligent building it is called as intelligent building an energy efficient or energy management system so it is there in the sea shore and is able to withstand a very heavy wind so similarly this high rise building is able to withstand a very high wind and energy efficiency stands by 15% which is more than any other conventional shape which is not not being inspired from the same so next we have the human eye inspired building which is in paris so human eye as i have uh, told earlier it is the human eye is having the ability to react to sunlight and manage the sight so we don't focus on the sunlight directly so the same thing is being the concept is being inspired and the building react to sunlight and it changes the orientation of the building according to the order to penetrate light so it is that maximum utilization of the natural light is being uh, captured in this building due to its orientation and the environment so the other example which we have seen is the eiffel tower which is inspired from the femur bone so as i have told the femur bone is the leg bone in the human body and the femur bone has the strength from tiny tube and tube structures so all the tissues which is making the tube and tube structure and it is having the maximum strength as the entire weight of the body of any human is being withstand by the leg the same strength has been achieved with the lightweight truss and truss concept so in the human uh, leg bone we have the tube and tube concept and the same concept is being inspired and is implemented in the <coughs> eiffel tower as truss within truss it's it's a complete a small smaller small truss which comes under each of the truss the structure of the leg bone is upside down nature what are achieved in the construction of the eiffel tower so one more example is the museum which is in us which is inspired from the bird wings bird wings have the mechanism of movement and this building adjusts its orientation to penetrate or to get the maximum amount of sunlight in the building 
and the shape of the building is both formal it is similar to the bird shape itself completing the composition function is also being mimicked the shape is mimicked the function is mimicked an opening to receive visitors and iconic creating a memorable image for the it also becomes aesthetic in other point of view so another example is the church which is in spain so the trees are able to take up the natural uh, form of uh, lighting and the tree trunk is able to take up the entire branches the entire load of the tree is taken by the branches same way the light reflecting and diffusing through the hollow space in the vault is being uh, inspired and is being constructed in the church which is there in the spain the theater which is inspired from the outer uh, skin of the durian fruit so again the sun angle and the position so everything is based on energy efficiency by which the concept is taken and the shapes are being taken into these uh, construction and provides natural light as well as a dramatic effect of shadows in the space what are all the other yet another nature inspired solutions are everywhere that we already know so dubai palm island is uh, one such structure which is inspired from the palm tree the palm tree uh, has the uh, is of very high and it is able to withstand the wind effect and the same structure of the tree leaves is being taken into account by which the dubai island is constructed so in case of palm tree it is able to withstand the wind effect so the similar thing in case of island it is able to withstand the barriers or the sea waves which is coming from the sea so the type uh, type is skyscraper which is uh, mimicked from the bamboo stick the structure is uh, mimicked or it's inspired from the bamboo stick so bamboo stick we all know it is having the high tensile property so the same concept tensile flexible so all these properties we know the same has been inspired to get those smaller groups to withstand the heavy wind on uh, this type of structure so cactus design from which is there in the doha qatar so inspired from even from the soap bubble uh, the people are getting inspired and they are constructing the uh, buildings so what is the nature of soap bubble actually soap bubble we we can see on a daily basis so when we take a soap bubble it will it is able to take uh, any type of space it it doesn't need a flat surface to take up that shape so any undulated surfaces even an undulated surfaces the soap bubble is able to occupy the maximum space so the soap bubble is being inspired so here we can see in the eden project the land surface is not flat and it is having so many undulations and from the soap bubble the structure is inspired and these undulations are covered using the shape of the soap bubble so the maximum land is getting uh, utilized in in such type of undulated uh, landscape so beijing national stadium which is inspired by the bird's nest and the floating house which is inspired from the sea waves and the airport in usa which is inspired from the mountain so this shape which is giving or similar to that of mountain is able to take up again the maximum sunlight that is the energy efficient building so what so far we are seeing about the structures which are being inspired from the nature so moving on to the materialistic point of view which is being inspired from nature so materialistic point of view as we know we have the cement which has to be reduced in case of concrete so cement is being inspired from corals so the corals are nothing but which is there in the sea shore the process of making this cement is we have to remove the carbon dioxide that is our major point or major uh, focus so reducing the carbon dioxide which is a greenhouse gas that will reduce the global warming so that gives a very good uh, impact on the global warming so reduction of carbon dioxide is nothing but reduction of cement so we have a new type of cement which is similar to that of coral reef so coral reef actually it builds uh, in the sea shore so here we can see what is exactly the mechanism which is being taken into account in the coral cement so sea water has calcium and this calcium when it comes in contact with the carbonate that will give, uh, give us the limestone so this creates the shells for the corals this concept is taken 
for the process of the cement which is being similar to that of the coral reef which is reducing the carbon dioxide and we are we are creating this type of dry cement and self healing concrete which is yet another uh, concept which is there in our civil engineering so self healing is inspired from the bones so our bones generally if we are uh, if we get wounded so obviously it is having the ability to heal by itself as the days passes so the same concept is being taken and we are creating a self healing concrete but how we are doing the self healing concrete is we are introducing various bacteria so that itself uh, will will be a very uh, bigger study on each of the topic so self healing concrete is created by the limestone producing bacteria so this creates the concrete when there is a crack obviously as the days pass on so just like our bones as the days pass on the concrete will fill the uh, cracks uh, by itself because of the reaction of the bacteria with the air and the another thing so we have seen a uh, cement and we have seen about the concrete which is inspired from the bone mechanism and the fiber fiber is nothing which gives the tensile property for the concrete so nowadays we use ma many fibers natural fibers artificial fibers synthetic fibers so many things are being used so fi fibers obviously the those are olden days where we were using the reinforcement as a very big steel rod but instead of uh, steel rod nowadays we are going for minute or uh, micro fibers or uh, nano fibers are also being used nowadays in the concrete and we are also going for ferro cement concept nowadays the sifcon everything is being coming into account where we have speaking about the tensile property so, so the spider silk has the highest tensile property in nature so by looking into this uh, synthetic fibers from the spider web <clears throat> so spintex engineering they also they have created a high performance sustainable textile or sustainable fiber which is having 1000 times more efficient than the equivalent synthetic fiber so insulation material from roots of mushroom so biome is nothing the insulation material which we can see from the mushroom which is the root of mushroom which is 100% natural sheet material as the organic refuse bio compound so the material also the bio compound so which is made out of bio plant based material creating an insulation material which is uh, inspired from the nature cooling towers inspired from the beetle so generally 40% of the water is there in the US and uh, all things in the US days water is getting evaporated from the industrial cooling towers so make sure the water is being received in that particular point infinite cooling towers so the beetle is able to keep or it, it is able to withstand or it is able to hold the water for a very longer period other than just getting evaporated. So this concept is inspired and the fresh water harvesting or the cooling towers are being inspired from this. So what we get from this infinite cooling, this helps or this reduces the evaporation of the water vapor and we are able to store a large amount of water annually. So from mucil. So mucil we can see in the seashore is able to adhere or is able to stand in that particular space with, uh, which is able to withstand the sea waves. So adhesive is one thing which is getting from so high performance not of styrene it is 300 percent stronger than other underwater adhesive and bonds to a wide range of materials so adhesive is very important for which is creating the bond between each of the construction materials bio inspired 3d printing concept so the human tissues the natural tissues which is again in our human body which is having a three-dimensional effect or it is having a self-strengthening ability through the biological growth. So each of the tissues will be growing one after other by itself. And the same concept is being inspired and the 3D printing, which is the new technology civil engineering, so manufacturing of high precision structures. So 3D printing concept itself is from the biomimicry, that is from the tissues. 
and this 3D printing concept is used for biomimic structures also. The bottom picture you can see is that shaped building. The shaped building is a concept of biomimicry. With the help of 3D printing, is again is a concept of biomimicry. The application. So, what is being done in SRM? That is the biomedical application in civil engineering. The research which has been carried out. So, as I have uh, speaking about the human structure. So, here we are taking the two things. One is the femur bone. So, the leg bone as well as the hand bone is taken into account here. The power of shape. The power. The shape plays a major role. That is the optimization of any particular element plays a major role. So we know what are all the conventional shapes of compression member and tensile member. So we, we know the compression member is nothing but the column and tensile member, we have the tensile thing which is having uh, the members, we call it as. The compression member we call we know is our circular column, square column, paper column and so on. So we are moving out with a power of shape. How, how come a shape can play a major role in structural efficiency and minimizing the material and mobility? So the commonly used shapes, which is derived from nature is the curved shell, the shell structures, which is similar to that of skull and the X, and columns, which is similar to that of long bone, tree trunks, and so on. Corrugated shapes can be taken from the cactus plant, and spirals are taken from the shells and sunflowers and so on. So what exactly the concept is taken from in case of the research which is being carried out here is the human body. That is the human leg bone and hand bone is being considered here. Human leg bone is withstanding the whole weight of the human body. So a similar type of leg bone shaped compression member is created and a similar type of hand bone shaped uh, tie member is created. And those two are combined to form a truss. So we create a tension member and we create a compression member. So we are speaking about only about the shape and not moving into the materialistic point of view. So how come a shape plays a major role? The maximize the structural strength, enclosed volume and strength to weight ratio. So as it was already told, it's not about only mimicking the shape. It should also be qualified and it should also have the quality as well as quantity about any other conventional material is able to take up. So without proving all these things, it obviously it is of no use as everybody knows. So here the femur bone is nothing but the leg bone and the hand bone is the humerus bone. So the leg bone is taken for consideration. So human leg bone shape is taken. The analysis of both analytical and experimental uh, validation is done for this type for this study. So the, the femur bone is taken and the analysis is carried out. So these were the varying shapes which has been taken into account for this study. So these are all the conventional shapes. That is the round shape, square shape we know, stepped uh, column and tapered column, and a new shape which is being introduced here is the filleted column which is similar to that of the femur bone femur bone is the leg bone as, as i have already told the same shape is is being already inspired for the e fill tower so the analysis as well as experimental works has been carried out for all these types of uh, shapes and these are all the molds which is uh, taken or or which is being fabric fabricated for all these shapes and the experimental works were also being carried out. So these are all the specimens which were taken for our, all these five shapes. And the compression specimen is tested in the UTM. And uh, one such shape, which is a filleted shape, which has seven dimensions, which is uh, which has to be yet another optimized. So just with one shape, we cannot come up with the shape. This is what can be replaced for the conventional shape. So furthermore, studies to be done in case of optimization. So we have seven different uh, dimensions we are, which we are able to see in this type of shapes. And this seven different shapes are taken half and is doubled at each point of uh, cross section. And these are all the other varying other shapes which is similar to that of the human bone. So all possibilities. So still more we can move on with four, more possibilities too, but we have restricted to few of those. So coming up with all these around the 10 to 15 shapes, which is further optimization is done by varying the diameters at, at each of the levels. 
So how it is being quantified on um, strength basis. So stiffness and volume ratio of compression member by which we are saying that this shape can be optimized or this shape can be uh, replaced in case of a conventional shape. So here based on stiffness, so any structural element or structural material should be stiff enough and the volume ratio means volume is nothing but which is giving us the lesser quantity of concrete which obviously reduces the consumption of cement so which in turn will reduce the energy efficiency and the energy produced so structurally efficient shape has been derived for compression member similarly human bone which is the hand bone is considered and the hand from analysis was carried out for the hand bone and the varying uh, conventional shapes of hand bone is being shown the rectangle rectangular parabolic rectangular circular and rectangular with hollow is something which is similar to that of the hand bone so molds were being uh, fabricated for all these things analysis and experimental work is carried out for these uh, tensile members too in the utm and here again the rectangular circular has been uh, taken as the optimized shape of these five shapes for further optimization, again, the symmetrical variation and unsymmetrical variation is carried out for in all the cross section along the varying uh, cross section is done. So these are all the other varying shapes or models which has been derived by uh, varying the dimensions. So based on the stiffness or volume of concrete, again, this shape is taken as a highly efficient or optimized tension member which can be replaced or which can be taken as an alternate for the conventional tensile member. So one such compression member and one such tensile member is being derived. So somewhere this has to be applied. So the application point of view, the tensile member and compression member only will be there in case of truss. So a king post truss application is also done. So wherever we have the tensile member, our optimized tensile member is placed. And in case of compression member, the optimized compression shape, that is, we are speaking about the shape, the optimized compression uh, shape is being placed. So both analytical as well as experimental works is being carried out for uh, the King Post Trust 2. So we created a three dimension here. We can see the three dimensional view that is assemblage of compression and tensile members for a King Post Trust. So these are all the joints in the truss assembly, which is uh, the corner joint, middle joint, top and diagonal joints, uh, how it is being cre created. So this is for the analytical point of view. So fabrication, that is the in-house fabrication is also done for this uh, tensile or this uh, king post truss uh, experimental point of view. So the compression member in the bottom we can see. So each and every shape is fabricated. In the bottom we have come up with the optimized shape of compression member. In the top we can see the optimized shape of tension member. The bottom most, each bottom joint, corner joint, diagonal joint, everything was uh, created. The erection of truss is done later on. So once the fabrication or the entire mold is cast, so the leveling, concreting, the usual procedures are also being carried out. We are assembling the truss, so oiling, batching, mixing, so concrete, so demold truss is taken and is taken for the experimental setup. So here we can see the schematic view of experimental setup of the two-dimensional truss. So we have uh, five places or five locations where we have kept the dial gauges to see how the behavior is being done. So universal load cell, a single point load is applied at the top. And the dial gauge is uh, readings were taken at five different locations. So since being the truss, so one end is taken as hinged support, another end is taken as the roller support. So this is the biomimicked shape truss. So with which we are uh, comparing this type of truss is that the conventional truss, our usual conventional shaped uh, truss, which is of normal rectangular shape or uh, circular shape. So here, since we are having varying dimensions, so we have uh, gone with two types of conventional truss. One is the average dimension of one particular element and the maximum dimension of one particular member is being taken. Two types of conventional truss are taken into account for comparison. So this is the test setup details. The load is applied at the top and we have supports at both the ends and we have five locations where we have the dial gauge readings. So this is the testing of truss in the loading frame.
So what we have seen the schematic view or in analytical investigation, the same has been carried out in the experimental point of view also, but not with the conventional shape, but with the optimized shape, how it is performing for a truss member. So cracks at different locations were also being uh, taken. And these were the crack width and crack distance and crack pattern, which is showing uh, the picture. So what exactly is the finding of this uh, mimic the optimized shape of compression tension member and its application? So first main thing is the shape which is getting optimized from the conventional shape by which the emission of carbon dioxide because obviously the quantity of cement or fine aggregate or coarse aggregate is getting reduced because of that the emission per one meter cube of concrete is 350 actually but total emission of this biomimic truss where the biomimic shaped compression and tension member is used it's just 65.89 kg so for conventional truss with average diameter, as I have already told, it is being compared with conventional truss too. Just like that, we can't prove this is what is happening. We have to prove with the conventional shape too. So conventional truss with average diameter is 103.40 and with maximum diameter is 116.61. But the conventional truss with the uh, optimized shape of compression and tension member is giving 65.89. The emission of carbon dioxide is getting reduced. Just because the emission of carbon dioxide is getting reduced, obviously the energy required to produce this concrete is also lesser. It is 36.27 percentage lesser energy which is required when compared to the conventional shape with average diameter, with that of maximum diameter is lesser for 43.20. The volume of concrete which is used here is again lesser for 33.13 percentage and 39.94 percentage when compared to the conventional shape. So conventional cross-section with equivalent self-weight of the mimic detrust is also suggested, which gives a nearer result to that of the mimic detrust optimized compression and tension member. Discussion is that nature's contribution for skeletal system of living organisms being is considered for application in structural system, it will benefit. Optimization or advantageous proportion to adapt structural systems is being done. The minimum material, minimum stress and minimum displacement which leads to minimum energy efficient, minimum energy produced, and uh, obviously everything is getting minimized. The self weight is getting reduced because of the optimized shape. The carbon emission and cost were found to be reduced by using this mimic the shape than the conventional shape. So moving on to the summary of what has been discussed so far. Nature has thousands of hidden concepts, which leads to the sustainable world. The applications of biomimics is not limited and biomimicry leads to ethical and optimal way of creation. The biodiversity and habitat can be preserved by nature's life principles. So energy conservation and waste minimization is the key thing which can be taken from biomimicry adaptations. So civil engineering, we need materials and structural integrity. So biomimetics leads to the sustainable Biomimicry leads to the sustainable concrete material, the optimized a large number of materials and structured surfaces, and it leads to the regenerative solutions. So nature is nothing but the mother of all classrooms. So the only thing is we have to look into nature in different point of view by which we can find the solution of any type of problem. Thank you. Any queries? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your time. Uh, participants, if you have any uh, queries or if you want to ask any question, you can ask. Yes, participants. So even if you feel hesitated to ask now, um, I'll give my mail ID. So any point of time, you can uh, mail me regarding any type of uh, problems. If you have, we can find solutions in different angle through biomimicry. Um, so there is a participant's uh, 
posted a question in the chat box uh, what is the difference between mimic trust and conventional trust so uh, uh, mimic the trust is just one minute actually i forgot to show that uh, conventional trust actually i'm sorry i should have included that to just now i, I thought reminded of that so mimic the trust is the optimized shape which we have taken here this is the optimized attention member as i have shown and here we have the optimized compression member so our usual thing this is the compression member and this is the tension member so this optimized shape of tension and compression member we call it as mimic the truss because it is having the optimized shape of compression and tension member here we can see the middle member and the bottom member is a tension and the diagonal all these diagonal things are the compression the shape of the compression and tension member is mimicked one but in case of conventional thing so here itself in the compression itself we can see if you see uh, this uh, member in the top we are having one diameter and the bottom is the diameter is varying as i have already told so conventional truss how we have considered is the maximum diameter is taken throughout for the entire uh, compression member same way the average diameter is taken for the entire compression member similarly in case of tension member also the maximum diameter is taken for the conventional shape and the average diameter is also taken for uh, conventional shape that we have considered it as the conventional shaped truss when compared to the mimic the shape are you, are you able to get it so here we are able to see the varying dimensions but in case of conventional truss it is not having this varying dimension our usual fully round column or a fully tapered column is what we will be having right square column the square or the round column don't have uh, any variation in the dimension so it is the straight from top to bottom which is having more amount of quantity of uh, material is required so this is the proven uh, compression and tension member which can be replaced for the conventional shape that is what we are actually showing here this is the conventional shape but we are moving up with the uh, optimized thing same way in case of conventional shape we take this as the round column from top to bottom it is the same size so quantity of material will be obviously more coming to the last thing the shape is somewhat differing at the top it is different and in the bottom it is different so this is the mimic the shape so these two is what we are comparing as conventional truss as well as the mimic the truss have i made it clear thank you ma'am yes ma'am so participants do you have any other doubt participants so weight between the mimic the truss and conventional truss is a uh, is one more question i guess no ma'am actually that that is a question they asked uh, okay. oh uh, here i have given actually the volume of concrete which is getting reduced so as the volume of concrete is reduced obviously the self weight of the concrete also will be re getting reduced in compared to the conventional thing as the shape itself is getting reduced the volume of concrete will reduce the cement con consumption will be reduced and self weight also will be reducing any other questions you need any other clarifications i'll just give my uh, email address in the chat box at any point of time you can mail me so participants if you have any other doubt you can ask
i think uh, there is no questions ma'am uh, thank so you. thank you so much ma'am uh, thank you uh, so much for your informative session on uh, biomimicry ma'am so i thank all the participants uh, for participating in this expert lecture on the eve of uh, conflict day celebration 2022 and thank you so much for your time ma'am uh, thank you ma'am thank you very much sir thank you yes ma'am thank you ma'am